Hi and welcome back to the channel. As part of the Home Lab series, I said we would cover off Docker and Portainer. So without further ado, let me take you through the video. Now, just so if you're not fully familiar with what Docker is, Docker is a container platform. Now, containers differ somewhat to virtual machines. I'm not going to go into the massive ins and outs of them, but let's put it this way. They are a lot less resource intensive and they're actually quicker to deploy than necessarily having a virtual machine that may run one instance or one service. The idea of a container is you can containerize one service into an individual container and then have multiple containers running on a on a single platform. Therefore, you better utilizing resources. Now, Portainer is, if you think of it this way, a Docker management system, so or a container management system in, in this instance. So what that enables you to do is gives you a nice graphical user interface to use, gives you more advanced analytics, more reporting and alerting, that kind of thing. So yeah, without further ado, I'll go through how to install Docker and Portainer, the latest version, so it doesn't matter when this video is uh, viewed, onto your Proxmox virtual machines. Cheers. So inside your Proxmox instance, the first thing you'll need to do is spin up a VM. Ignore the fact I'm trying to do it as a container, it's just in my mind. But we'll spin up a VM. Now I'm going to use Ubuntu to do this. Now I always give it a name that's nice, easy to remember. So I'm using Docker port for this instance. Select the particular storage and ISO image. So that ISO image is Ubuntu. Uh, disk size, you don't necessarily need a large amount here, but I will just decide which one I'm going to deploy it to, which I'll probably just stick it on my local drive because that's an NVMe. Go on to CPU, and again, this isn't something that you need to particularly overclock so much, but um, I'll just put it on four and then give it four gigs of memory for now. Now, I can upscale this at some point, and since making this video, I have found that running it He's kind of pushing the limits at 4 gig, so I probably will spin this up at a later date to a little bit more. When it comes to the Ubuntu server, once it's built, I'll be able to log in. You can do this different ways. You can find out the IP address and use PuTTY or some other SSH tool. I tend to use TerraTerm to log in, or you can just use the console. Now the good thing is with Ubuntu, it tends to deploy via a live ISO. As you'll see, it gives you the option to try or install. I will just go through the install version rather than doing it via a live ISO. So we'll just wait for it to boot up. And I have sped up certain elements of this video just to make it a little bit quicker, but I haven't done every single one. But realistically, end to end, it will take you around 10 to 15 minutes to complete all of this. So you'll be presented with the language selection screen, and I'm going to go English UK because that's where I'm based. And when you've built into this, you'll either get the option to update to the new installer or use the current one. I'd always suggest using the update. So that's just pulled into the new installer. And again, it's now looking for my keyboard and these are the options I've got. So I could go Ubuntu Server Minimized or I'm going to go with the standard Ubuntu. And it's kind of up to you where you want to go with this. I generally just stick to the defaults and it will pull through a DHCP address for me. And I'm going to use the entire disk. When we get to this point, it will prompt me to say that it will erase the disk as there's absolutely nothing on it. I'm not really concerned, so I'll just click continue. And then I just need to give it a name and my name, a server name, and then a username, which will be your root-based user. So I'll tend to use the tried and tested for this. You can obviously change the password at a later date, but I'd strongly suggest setting a fairly strength-free password here. I generally use a password manager, so all of them are managed that way. 
and you've got the option to install open SSH here so I'll tick that and you can install all these packages and docker does appear on here however I'm not going to use that because it will only be the latest package available as part of the Ubuntu install and when we go through the installation with docker I'll show you how to add the very latest repository to um, Docker's repository list so that it'll actually pull the very, very latest version. So I have sped up certain parts of this and it will now pull through all of the individual parts of the OS and kernel so we just let that finish installing I have sped this up somewhat as you can probably tell by the cursor going a little bit mad but it, it takes depending on your connection and what you're installing it to anywhere between a couple of minutes and five minutes don't don't worry if it looks like it's hung it realistically hasn't it just sits and, and runs in the background and then it will reboot and one of the things you'll see is a couple of failures and one is to around a mountain cd-rom you don't need to worry about this too much because when you're deploying via proxmox most likely you're making a virtual cd-rom using the iso so what I'll do as this reboots is remove that challenge by going into hardware, removing the CD-ROM. And you'll notice it comes up in orange, so what will happen is next time that boots, it will basically have removed it. Now, the reason that some of this is blurred is because there's my SSH keys, which I'm not going to share with you. I just log in with the root user. And then what I'm going to do is what you do straight away is just do the usual sudo apt get update and then apt get upgrade. And it's just to install the very latest elements that I need on the Ubuntu server ready for me deploying various parts with the Docker. Now when I do the Docker, because they are listed commands and you can get them from docker.io, in their installation guides I will most likely SSH in and I'll use a product that I use quite a lot called TerraTerm there are others available when it comes to restarting services just collect the uh, the defaults and, and move on so what I'll do is if you can't remember your IP address at this point you can just write in IP address and click enter if you can you don't need to uh, to worry about it now I had forgot so I'll just do IP address and you can see there mine is 32.199 for this instance and we need that for a little bit later on where we're going to also connect into Portainer as well but if I'm going to use any SSH tool I'm going to SSH in either by the host name or that um, IP address so again, I'll just log on using my credentials. And once we're in, I'll just make this window a little bit bigger. Now you can do all of this via the normal shell. It's just I find it a lot easier to copy and paste directly. And what we're going to do is copy in some packages to install. So we're installing curl and various other bits that we need, some of them are certificate parts. And then what we're going to then slowly do is add in all the extra requirements that we need, um, particularly with the Docker image. So what I've enabled that is basically putting in the elements that's required from Docker to be able to be pulled down by just an up update. So when we do a sudo apt update, it will pull parts of that bits in ready so just run the update and then what we'll finally do is deploy docker again using the following commands i will stick all these commands into the chat and description however you need to be aware that they may change over time so you can always get the most latest commands from docker themselves and then we'll just deploy the docker compose plugin 
Once that's installed, we can finally finish off by installing Portina. So we'll just let that go through. Again, the option to terminate whatever services you need. So they restart, just select the defaults. And at this point, we'll just need to start to think about how we're going to deploy Portina. Now, one of the things we'll need to do is have a persistent volume so that when we restart this VM, that Portana config remains. We don't certainly don't want it not to persist. So what we'll do is create a volume. You need to remember, unless you've added your user to the sudo group to use sudo, as I didn't. So I'm just going to create one called Portana data. So my config will be mapped to that. And then what I'm going to do then is deploy Portana. Now the interesting thing is, is that Portainer is just a Docker Compose container and then I've deliberately put it onto certain ports. You may have to adjust those if those are already in use, but mine are listed on the screen. I think I'm using 9443. And then what we can do is if I can remember my IP address, which I believe is 199, I can then go to 9443 making sure I use HTTPS you will get a non certificate there is ways to fix this and at this point just enter a really strong admin password now I use um, I used to use last pass but I now use one password to manage all of mine. I will do a video at some point on that product because it's really good because you can use, certainly use it for the family. So just make sure you set a really good password at this point. So I will just paste mine in. And there we are, we're into Portana. The first thing I like to do in Portana is to add custom templates or to move where the templates are. So as standard, you do get some included in the product. However, they are very basic. So if I just go into the local, you can see at the moment I'm running one container. Strangely enough, the container is Portainer. Now, the custom template part is actually under settings, what I'm looking for, and this URL. And again, I'll add this URL in, but this one basically gives us access to some Portainer 2.0x custom templates that are pre-made so a lot of the services that you may run in a home lab are already provided by the community and there's just some of them so if you look at add guard vault guard uh, duck dns jellyfin for example cody let's encrypt lidar which is a music mp3 grabber nzb get nginx and nginx proxy manager plex for example, Plex requests, you get the idea, Radar, for example. But yeah, you've got all of those available to you from the get-go, which I think is fantastic. And there's, there's more you can add, so you can add in your own at a later date. So welcome back, and hopefully we've covered off everything you need now to install Docker and Portainer onto your home lab. Now you can vary, so the mileage, if you want to you know, not use Ubuntu, you can use different OSs as your operating layer to get you started. But that's kind of just what I'm used to using, so that's why I use Ubuntu. And next up in, in the series will most likely be the true NAS deployment. Then I'll make it into more advanced stuff like looking at Kubernetes as well as Rancher, for example, to run Kubernetes clusters. But yeah, for now, that's kind of where we'll leave it. Um, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button because that helps you know, me be able to deliver better content to you guys. And also, if you haven't yet already and you do like where we're going and, and this community, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.